And yes, bells were rung, were rang, uh, rang, rang, rang. Uh, yes, there were bells. Hi guys, Captain Glenwell here and New Year's Eve is coming up so I wanted to talk to you about the typical Victorian New Year's Eve. Maybe you can introduce it to your evening, maybe not. Queen Victoria had a passion for the New Year's Eve celebration of Hogmanay. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right because it's a Scottish traditional fest and it means the last day of the year. So that's probably a bit of an introduction of the New Year celebration in the Victorian era. Some things that were very important for the Victorian New Year's Eve were uh, the gift giving and special attention to the first footing. Now first footing literally means the first foot to cross your threshold after midnight. So that person should bring gifts, bread, coal, uh, I don't know exactly what. Uh, whiskey, I think, food or greenery to ensure a prosperous and healthy year ahead. Jewelry works too. Now what was also very important was that the first footer had to be good looking, preferably a tall, dark men, instead of like um, the typical Vikings, the plants which were generally considered bad luck yeah sorry about that luckily I can enter <laughs> people in the Victorian era wouldn't be real Victorians if they didn't have a lot of superstitions and customs around the New Year's as is Clean your house prior to New Year's. Take out all trash. Clear your heart so a new fire can be made. Do not work on New Year's Day. I like that one. Lit candles should not be carried outside. Why? Do not do laundry. Do wear a new piece of clothing on New Year's Day or risk bad luck. Yeah. Ring bells at midnight to chase away evil. Following with wealthier people should give gifts to rewards to loyal servants. And everyone must have money in their pockets, even small children. Now, another typical Victorian thing was the matchmaking. On New Year's Day, uh, the wealthier people opened their houses to let in the eligible bachelors to um, have a sort of speed dating with their unmarried daughters. Like, a young man would have uh, several invitations from a n number of households and would spend approximately 15 minutes or so chatting with the unmarried daughters before moving on to his next engagement. Now, another thing that was uh, very important were new clothes. Everybody wants a new set of clothes, but especially in the Victorian era, the New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, was a time to get new clothes, to wear those new clothes, to uh, symbolize a fresh beginning and leaving the past behind. And yes, bells were rung to symbolize good victories over evil and chase it away. And in many greeting cards you can still see those bells as a symbol of New Year's Eve. And of course, in the Victorian era, the postcard was a big thing, as is with the New Year's period. On almost every card you will see a Happy New Year or Best Wishes, but what also re reappears a lot are the clovers and swines, because they are bearers of good fortune and, and thus were featured on a lot of greeting cards. Now the pocket money, that's again superstitious tradition just to ward against uh, poverty and misfortune in the next year and now the only thing that rests me is to wish everyone a happy new year 
uh, the best for the year, the all the fortune and wealth and happiness, love. Um, I don't know what else I could wish you, but everything you want. And I'll see you next time. Um, it would make my year great if you share this around. But most of all, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. See ya. Happy New Year.